Greetings everyone, and great here with another H Pirates 4 replay. Spawn well, on the bottom left side as the orange Ottomans, we have Scarlet Devil. It looks like he's going to go for an early military academy. Spawn well, on the top right side as the red roost, we have Moldy Moldady here. Hair. I can't pronounce any sort of name. As we do have Roost play on the field, let's go ahead and swap on out. Get to see him to see the trade bounties. Four is up here. Red does find his deer deposit or find his opponent's deer deposit. Where's Orange's scout? That's Orange's scout. He missed his own deer deposit. Oof. And this deer deposit has not been claimed either. Red, both his deer deposit up here, which Red has not found just yet. His scout went the same direction. Orange scout, which is not good. Or actually, it's just fine because nothing's posing a threat to these deer over here. Red may find the deer right there. Finds a good number of sheep and a wolf. Orange's scout is here. Looks like finds another wolf here. Do we have a scout over here now, which will find a deer deposit. Orange will find his close deer deposit. Red may sneak a two kill or two. Looks like Red only gets to the deer. And he still has this deposit here, which is seven deer. So he will get plus a wolf. So he will get his uh, tier two trade bounty. Spearman does get hit there. In which there's actually quite a bit of stuff still on the field. Maybe we'll get his tier three if he gets both of the boar as well. We now have the Kremlin not being pulled on the field. Let's swap out a caster mode. The Reese player does have three villages on stone, so he is going to eye for a secondary town center. Private food on the right side as well as stone. The Kremlin there will find some good defensive. Oh, looks like Orange sneaks the kill there onto the uh, wolf. So you will not be able to get that trade bounty. He needs at least 350. Oh, there's actually a deer still there. So kill off that deer and kill off one wolf. And then both boar will give him access to tier 3 trade bounty. Orange will not see the deer. I don't know if there's any more wolves left on the map. There's one. So we're just going to have to keep an ear out for the... Uh, being attacked by a wolf uh, signal. Scout engaging the mine, showing who's boss. Double broad axe now being researched. Over here, we do have the spearmen being pushed on back. Three scouts here hitting this mining camp. Being fast, taking one of those healthier scouts engaged, orange to scout. Gains good damage there on the orange to scout there. Orange needs to pull back his scout. He may actually lose it. He's not paying attention. Loses the scout. Spearman's still over here. Deer is still alive. And that villagers push me over here. The villagers can shank that spearman no problem. He does spot that single deer. And he does perhaps get body blocked there by the town center, actually. But the spear does not get shanked. And it's like, oh, there's actually a deer still alive there. Stab. Uh, now the spear will get shanked. Oh, looks like, oh, it looks like Red wasn't paying attention, nor was I. And he lost all of his scouts. Howdy. Apparently those uh, emojis don't really work all too well in my little chat box. May need to fix that. But then again, I don't really like emojis. <laughs> Most of the time they're cancerous. <laughs> Either way, we do now have some supply not being put up by the military school. We do still have the twin minaret minaret Though the previous patch did in fact buff the... Uh, what is it called? I it's been so well since seeing the other Ottoman landmark, I forget what it's called. Howdy. So of course collecting up the deer. We do got a secondary town center now going up for orange. No secondary military school just yet. 
You could try building that out so we can get out a nice reserve unit. The battle techniques is now complete by the Roos. And now it's going for some archers now. Tapahi will of course be very good against them. Line of fortified palisade walls now going on up to protect this flank. Another hunting cabin here to help collect the deer. And also it's in a good position there, so we'll get a decent amount of gold income. Should pay it for itself in maybe in four minutes. Those can hit there. Could activate fortitude. Fortitude only reduces melee damage received. Not range damage, so it's actually decent to use against villagers. Also, uh, villagers try to shank him. Now, got both military schools there. There's the blacksmith. And it's while he does take some damage there. He can improve his defensive arrows by going for the range upgrade. Ottoman player only has wheelbarrow research, while the Roost player does have wheelbarrow and the lumber preservation. Or the one before, the double broad axe. We do now have the horticulture research. And now we do have an early night. The early night is going to impale the Sabahi no problem. Gets a follow up strike as well. This while he does have more damage than normal horsemen at 12, but it does cost more than normal horsemen at 16, uh, 160. And there goes that while he thinks the extra arrows. Got quite a bit of villagers here on gold. Hey, you want to go with something outpost there? Just keep them extra safe. Oh, and Orange has a good number of sheep here, doesn't he? Red has a good number of sheep as well. So both players have a good amount of reserve of food. Scout getting hit there. Looks like he has rebuilt a scout. And the early night will keep the spa he away. I've been doing it for quite some time. It's just I've been not been growing quite a bit. Or I have been growing a little bit more faster now since I've been casting. Heroes 1 as well as Age of Empires 4, but I started in, on my YouTube channel like in 2012. Starting out with Company Heroes 2 and Grey Goo. We also now got a town center being pulled out next to Boar. He can actually garrison the town center and have the town center fight the Boar instead of his villagers. Keep that safer. As of right now, I pretty much just cast for as a hobby. And if I'm going to do anything career-wise, right now I'm just trying to cultivate a crowd or a following, I guess you could say. Not for monetization. Looks like four will be killed. There goes the Akuna Matata, though. Okay, there is enough space there between it and the town center, so it doesn't prevent any blockage there. Uh, not really. I've been doing a bit of Asian Empires 3 in the interim. I still got burnt out on Relic 3 and Dawn of War 2 Elite mod. I heard there's a couple new ones coming out. What was it called? Stormgate and another one. There's a, another person I follow is Giant, Gear, Giant Grant Games, who's been interested in those games. So I wonder if they're going to do any well. I really wish Iron Harvest had a replay system. I think that's one reason why it sort of beat it out. Same thing with Grey Goo. If they don't have a replay system, I think replay systems are pretty important for RTSs, in my opinion. You guys can create more of a casual environment rather than more of the uh, not casual environment, if that makes any sort of sense. Do now got a pair of lancers on push way forward. Iron Harvest, yeah. Iron Harvest is pretty good. I love the atmosphere. 
but the unit response time is not good. It, there's a big severe lag time and it's not exactly fun to micro on the infantry. They didn't put a large amount of art into it, don't get me wrong about that. I was even a backer for the game, so my face is actually in the game. It is beautiful game, but it's clunky. I trade house right now is providing appears to be 160 gold per minute. That may be still ticks out. That may be about right for tier two trade bounty. Fortified Palisade walls now being torched on down. Got some upgrades here as well. Oh, here's one that's sort of quite interesting to me. Age of Mythology retold. I love the crap of Age of Mythology. It's one of my favorite RTSs of all time. And the remat hopefully remaster is pretty good. I played the crap out of Age of Mythology when growing up. Was I good? Probably not. <laughs> Wooden Fortress now, Garrison. He may need to bring up the militia. He doesn't have much military nearby. He does have seven charges, so there's 14 militia available. Main arms being picked on off. We do got some Spahi and other forces before we forward. Wooden Fortress taking some hits. Yep, uh, I don't blame you. But the same people who are doing H Mythology remaster, I believe, is also did. That seemed unusually loud. It was also... Oh, apparently the Warrior Monk can't be converted. I did not know that. Uh, it was the same people who remastered Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 3. Age of Empires 3 had a bit of a rocky start, but overall it is, I'd say, in a good state at the moment. As long as it's not the same people who did the Chinese expansion. For me, it's I couldn't really get into StarCraft 1, at least not the, uh, what's it called, the mod I put in StarCraft 2. It's the, when it comes to older games like that, if you don't fix, like, say, maximum 12 units per control group, it's something that's really hard to get back into. Some things need to be improved. So the uh, Command and Conquer remaster is pretty good. You know, I've got a good number of chain of series before we forward. A significant number of them. That's going to report the cavalry. You may need to get some Magnals to deal with them. Warrior Monks will have a bit of trouble there. If he gets some, does get some Saints Blessings there. There's a round of militia, but not all the militia. Magnal not put on the field, but not on the roof side. The militia has to be very aggressive. Maybe we'll send the militia to gauge the Magnal. Crossbows gain some good damage on in. Hitting gain some good damage on men arms. Magnal rolls and misses on the crossbows. Good micro there by Red. Time to focus on the Lancer. Lancer does go down. More spearmen men arms here. Chains of Ballast. Uh, in in many other things, it's StarCraft 1, so I said, oh yeah. If I remember correctly as well, StarCraft 1's UI, the spell captures a balance because it's horrendously bad casted. Because the spells are incredibly overpowered, but are incredibly hard to use because how clunky the UI is. Yeah, I can see that. It's probably, and not to mention, Zerglings and Company, and not Company, but StarCraft 1 are really overpowered. If they didn't have that issue, then I would assume Zerg would be immensely overpowered, as well as spell casters. Imams catch the sacred site there. Down south, got more farms going on up, but that's not great farm placement. At least get a middle right there, make it a little bit better. He's a little bit... Oh, what the hell is that? There's actually no path there from the farm to the town center. He has to go all the way around. Ugh, he is not placing good farms. Listen to me, 
We do now have the forestry and the veteran spearman research. Red right now has 102 villagers versus 86. 42 to 40. Values in favor of orange, but only by a small amount. But it's actually increasing quite well. We do got quite a bit of mana arms being pulled for the Ottoman, as well as the Sapahi. No more Janissaries, so that may have been. Let's take a look at the Vizier. I have not been paying attention to the Vizier. Bruce player is almost a tier 3 trade bounty. It's gone for the Antonio Hills, military campus, fast training, and a Janissary complete. That's where he got the majority of his Janissaries from. Or maybe entirety. One to two. <clears throat> we now have a single or two spring goals in the field. It takes three spring goals, one shot in Maganel. Yeah, good number of mana arms here. Crossbows will be very useful, which he does have a good number of them. Mana arms are going to be useful versus, of course, the mana arms. As well as against the Pahi. We got three Maganels in the field for the Autumn player. We've got Mass Maganel. So, yep. Those spring goals, he needs to make sure he protects. He does have three spring goals on the field now. Can't afford to lose any. Got some Roost Knights on the way as well. And well as another Warrior Monk, he may be eyeing to get out some more Saints Blessings. Horseman goes down, spring goals. Gets a hit there. He does, it's a very urbanized area, so the spring goals should save for now. Magnus back out for distance, which means not being useful. Spring goals should just shoot anything. Militia being brought on the field. Another Maganel persuade forward. Crossbow. Oh, can that Maganel immediately get sniped? Very good. This Maganel is now going down the hill. This Maganel is going to persuade forward. Does the midterm path nearby for increased hack speed? Bruce's front line starting to disintegrate. He does have one charge of Militia at the moment. Now the Roost player does his own Maganel on the field, but Spring Balls don't go down. All the Spring Balls to go down, but all the Maganels go down, so they did their job. Crossbow's gonna get overran. Maganel not been hit by the Spahi. Maybe we'll use the Fortitude ability to quickly kill it off. Double Spearman not engaged the Spahi. Man arms for forward. Recent player says gonna have crossbows engage the man arms. Handful of Spearman just remaining. Might as well call them the militia. All two of them. Man arms slowly being whittled down. Spahi getting whittled down as well. More Spearman, Spahi push way forward. Council is engaging, does have to the force here for defense as well, but he's starting to this place like overran. He needs got more Spearmen. Got some Metros here. They may be opportunity to pick up the Metros with reinforcing Spearmen. And Orange now have fallen back. He's going for more Sapahi right now from his four military schools, as well as more Maganel. He went for the Mid-Hidden Bureau armor, right? Yes, he did. Glad you want to spend casual. That's not bad. And campaigns and co-op. Uh, oh, I just didn't see the re previous message. Uh, my favorite was Warcraft 3. The only thing I was playing competitively, but I didn't get far since I wasn't focused on it. Old slow. But only play campaigns and co-op. Campaigns are fine. Most players actually don't go to multiplayer. There is a game, or there is a video from Giant Grant, Grant, uh, Giant Grant Games uh, explaining why... RTS developers need to focus more on the co-op experience and single-player experience rather than multiplayer because only about 20% of players at most go from single-player to multiplayer. And so if you play any sort of multiplayer, whether it be one or two games, that could meet the bare-bones definition of hardcore. And actually, the most popular game mode right now in StarCraft 2 is co-op. Since a PvE environment's a bit more relaxed and more fun, rather than competitive. <laughs> One of these Magnus is severely wounded. He does not have any Janissaries. Janissaries do have a repair ability, but he can does not have them on the field, so he can't repair up the Magnus. Another Vizier is not available, it's the last remaining Vizier. Yep, guess I guess about right. I've never really played much co-op in StarCraft 2 myself. No multiplayer, just campaign for me, because the campaigns are quite reasonable. At least the Wings of Liberty 
Uh, part of the swarm was pretty easy, in my opinion, and and I found the Legacy of the Void campaign just too much focus around the Spear of a Dune. Yeah, that would be, uh, how about the promises they already made or reforged? After all, I don't think you've got even the basic promises, let alone something like that. Horsemen moving around. Oh, not sure what of those units. Those units being thrown away. I can see the horsemen trying to go for harassment, but he does throw away those units as well. Oh, wait. Maybe trying to free up some population space. High army not being built, as well as melee armor and military academies. Yeah. Even right now, people say they can't recommend reforged. Yeah. They apparently made the, even Warcraft 3 not reforged even worse with the breaking down some of its functions. Istanbul Observatory not being employed on the field. Those are getting hit there. Imam trying to keep the points captured. He does go down. It's 50 50 whether or not this point will decapture. If you were to task the cavalry charge forward ahead, you would stop the decapture. But uh, looks like it won't be decaptured. Or will be decaptured. Both players now advance the next age. Do you have the high armory here? You know, get some dirt cheap siege weapons. Or at least a discount on them. And there goes that sacred site. I haven't really looked in the storm gate just yet. If they have a co-op mode, that would be nice. I think the people made storm gate were some of the more original developers of uh, StarCraft 2, or at least some of the older Blizzard developers. So hopefully they get some good work done and learn and understand what they've done. Man arms to get annihilated there, so these crossbows as well. They're just sort of streaming forward. Right now, I have no faith in any sort of game. Pump Heroes 3 was a massive letdown for me. Not sure about three player one since even finding one of my friends with R play RTS is hard, yeah. RTS is a, definitely a smaller genre. If there was actually more good games, the genre would grow. But the problem is, there hasn't really been a whole lot of massive games, blockbuster success stories. Man, arms now try and pursue that villager. That villager will be saved by the Savahi. There is a large amount of Maganels there, isn't there? Three spring gold support. More spearing fish on the flanks. This will keep his opponent at base. These man arms now hitting his opponent's villagers. This will keep him proud in space, keep him from doing the offense. Allowing the Roost player to get more of a desired composition and actually see what his opponent's gone for. He sees the Zapahi. He sees all these units, Spearmen. And there's a handful of Janissaries there. He's going for a good number of Janissaries. Has not seen all the Maganels, which actually may be important for the Autumn player. He should actually keep these Maganels in reserve. If this one does not know about them, then he won't prepare a counter for them. Trying to push way forward there. Some more Roost Horsemen. They're not elite horsemen. The elite horsemen's on the way. Going for elite army tactics. Does have Boyar Forward 2. Not biology, however. Does put the elite spot heat, which they do have biology researched. Arms to 
take some damage there. Does save his Mega Nose, though some of them have taken some hits. Janissary's course can repair them up. Got a decent force here. The Roost player is actually not at pop cap. He needs to rebuild some units. Pushing down some farms there. More of these crossbows push me forward. I'm not sure what he's doing, but he is keeping his opponent at, in his base. The autumn player does have a bit of stone. Got three relics for red, two relics for orange. Force him to push away forward. Magano gets minor damage there. Got some Schultzy here. Gets a decent hit there on the Janissaries. And a super gets some good hits as well. Does have the army tactics. We got a very large number of Magnos. Seven Magnos there. And they all hit those horsemen getting severe damage there. Spring Dolls push forward. He does have the increased range upgrade and the uh, high armor upgrade. So giving them 12.5 range. They'll only be, out, be, be outdone by Mongol Spring Dolls. And almost all those Magnos going down. Great engagement by the Roost. But he now has to deal with all these other force on the ground. He has a good number of Schultzy there. Spring Dolls push forward. He has his own Magnos push forward. Hit them. Janissaries. Janissaries taking massive hits there. Sipahi is going to go on down. Horseman 24. Spearman is Horseman now charging. Massive number of Sipahi still here. So the Spearman can be very useful, as was men armed. Schultzy will to shoot anything and everything. Trying to go with the Maganels. You'll lose the Sipahi to go with the Maganels. But everything else will get annihilated by the Schultzy and Spearman. A couple of Bruce Archers in the mix. Great Bombard now pulling off field. He's good damage there. Schultzy and Archers push way forward. Single Horseman charge way forward as well. He only has a couple of them, but Springballs get a good hit there on the Great Bombard and does take out the Great Bombard there. Schultz in the back line, Spy creeping the way around the corner and closing the Schultzy now. Spearman and Man Arms trying to stop the. Spotty there, he does have some place to shroud now okay, for increased attack speed. And Spahi is starting to get ripped apart. Spahi does not run down. Red's making some good headway there. Being very effective. And Orange does back of the game now. As Anne Grade saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.